Good day, Dan. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today over Zoom. My pleasure. Glad to be here, Guy. Thank you. Um, so you and I have talked about uh, uh, business acumen and financial mm -hmm. literacy for L&D professionals for a while here. We've been meaning to get together to do this video. Mm -hmm. Before we launch into all of that, can you give our audience a little bit about your background? Sure. I've been uh, in the learning and development field for over 20 years, but I've learned to kind of focus in that space between uh, competency development and performance, if you think of that space, and what the business needs, and really honing in on that specifically. And I find that that's been very rewarding for me, and I enjoy that very much. Well, thank you for that. Uh before we shift into the main event, so what kinds of companies are you doing with this? Because I think you've traveled kind of worldwide doing have. this work. Yeah, most of my worldwide, if it makes it sound so awesome, but my worldwide has been American, North American companies with worldwide far-flung parts of the enterprise. But nonetheless, yes, travel all around in the space of business and learning the business, interpreting the business, and translating the business into the into the work stream, into the workflow. Uh, what does it mean to us? Uh, that's the kind of work that I do. Um, we specialize in, um, you know, using simulations, a lot of simulation work, facilitated simulations, either tabletop or on a computer. A lot of finance seminars, like interpreting the scorekeeping of a business and what does it mean to me and my part of the business. And integrating that into leader development and management training. Uh, so that's taken me all around the world. Uh, it's, it's been great. <laughs> yeah. Well, you and I have known each other for you know two or three decades, more than two decades, so probably closer to three. Um, but uh, so so again, we've talked about you know business acumen and financial literacy for L and D professionals because I've always felt that you mm -hmm. know there's a lot of nonsense that's spoken about. There's a lot of talking yeah. about making investments without a clue about what the returns might be, uh, return mm -hmm. expectations, all sorts of kind of silly stuff here. But you made a comment recently that I read that said, you know, not enough to see the big business picture and that limits their impact. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, in my experience, that's where things uh, kind of, Disconnect. Um, we are, as learning and development professionals, you know, of the subset of human performance technologists, um, we typically will, we're doing our best. You know, we have well intention, um, but we find that sometimes we can go down the, uh, uh, a road that isn't really focused on what the business requires. And it shows sometimes uh, that we, we, maybe we haven't internalized it as, as a profession or as professionals or we tend to get derailed because our stakeholders and our sponsors you know, are asking us to do things or, or sometimes telling us directly, this is what I need you to do and this is how long you got to do it. And uh, we said, all right, fine, we'll do that and I'll get, get to work. Um, but yet um, we, we find that we just don't see the bigger picture what's driving that request or what's driving that priority uh, and translating that business reality to our content, our content choices, pushing back on different types of stakeholders, using uh, an informed opinion, uh, maybe some evidence-informed recommendations, uh, as well as, you know, what the business requires. Um, and I see that again and again. And I think we can, we can do better if we, uh, if we integrate a little bit more business thinking. It sounds complicated, I think, to some people, and there may be uh, they may be a bit uh, fearful of you know turning into all this here. But but is it really that complicated? For it isn't. It it isn't. It's just a few principles, and that's been my experience as well. Working with L and D professionals, we find that oh, that's what's going on. You know, it's like aha, right? Uh, we're very bright. We want to do good work but we just really haven't spent any time on it. We are, we're CPTs, you know, we've got an HRCI designation or we've got some sort of a quality like a CMQ after our names. We're not MBAs. Uh, so we've kind of gone specialist in many regards, you know, in, in, in many cases. 
Um, and so that means we're bright, we're focused. And when we see these kinds of bigger picture, makes those connections, then it's, ah, I can, I, you know, you can't stop me. I get it. And uh, it, it isn't necessarily complicated, but it is an op uh, it is necessary that we take some, some time with it and learn and uh, allow ourselves to kind of be uncomfortable in that learning. Uh, because again, there's many of us that isn't our, our focus. It hasn't been our focus. So you've talked a little bit about five factors mm -hmm. of how they matter to the business. Can you talk a little bit about those five factors? Yeah, the five factors, and, and I have to tip a cap to, you know, uh, lots of others. And Kevin Cope has written the book, uh, you know, Understanding the Bigger Picture uh, of the Business. And he organizes around five factors. And I've adapted that in my work. You know, if you think of just five things, that's manageable, right? It's not complicated. It's five things. You want margin. So that means factor number one, well, a business needs to have some revenue and then it's minus cost equals profit. So there's your margin. It's a profit margin game. So I need margin. I need asset speed. And what we're talking about that is how quickly can we take all of our assets to some commercial and value to our key stakeholders? So that's speed, right? So if I have inventory, move it, get it out of here. If I have people, I want to allocate them correctly to doing things that are valuable. If I want to have a meeting or a time, you know, we're committing time to things, do so in quickly. So it's about asset speed. Uh, next, you know, you consider we have to pay the bills. So it's about cash, cash and cash flow. And when we think about it in terms of speed, sometimes cash flows out way before it flows back in. And for some businesses, particularly smaller ones, it's more apparent, but it's always on the minds of senior executives when we think about cash and cash flow. So those are th the first three. The fourth one is growth. So I learned a long time ago as being an Iowa farm kid, if, we're, if it's not growing, it's dying. So if we don't grow as a business, we should you know, be worried. Well, what's growth? Well, usually that's top line, you know, the revenue. You're looking at volume, like we're doing more subscribers, more policies, we're selling more products. But it might also be we're getting better price, we're selling the right things that are more innovative. But also growth means there are people are learning, we're creating new capability, we have new relationships, we're expanding our reach. Um, that's different types of growth. So it's always good to be focused on growth. So there's your fourth one. And then the fifth one is people. And I have learned too in working with L&D that oftentimes we are so focused on our learners, our employees, that we think people are exclusively employees. You know, we use the, yeah, people are our most valuable asset. You know, you've heard that before. Well, no, it's not just the employees, but you know, customers are people, our clients are people, our communities that we do business, we're business in are, are people. The triple bottom line that we're trying to is all about the people and sustainability. So if we think about the people and their decision making and their commitment and their energy, you know, that's the fifth factor. And that's where leadership comes in. That's where I like to stay in the space, right? It's about how do we bring your leadership skill to these five factors and integrate them. And then when we're teaching and learning, and enabling performance, it's in that context. Great, thank you. So from a L&D or a HPT, human performance technology versus learning and development, you know, the substance mm -hmm. of HPT, um, where in your experience do people struggle the most? You know, and what, what is it they could really need to really focus on and understand a little bit better? Because we're yeah. in the people business, most of us that are in L and D, we're we're trying to help people do things better. But sometimes we might you mm -hmm. know, own decision making processes, you know, fall a little bit short here in terms of some of these other factors. Yeah, and first, I think L and D needs to be curious about the business. So if you're on a project, let's say you're an instructional designer with up to your elbows and articulate, articulate. Uh, 
yes, you can ask the question, why am I doing this project? And you'll, you'll likely get a answer that's related to the project. Either we've been asked to do it or the compliance requirement changed or we had this issue, right? Um, lean into the question about the business reason. And sometimes that's a new space and you might not be able to come up with your own answer. So you might have to do a little bit of asking, ask people about the business, about where this fits in and why this fits in. I have had great success with adapting the five why framework that comes from quality circles from back in the day. No magic about five whys necessarily, uh, but asking why a few more than just a, once or twice. Um, and so if you think about it, well, why are we doing this compliance program? Well, it's because we need to, and we've been asked to, and if we don't, we're going to get sued. Huh? Why is that important that we don't get sued? Because we have a core value around uh, ethics and, and good business practice. Huh? Why is that important? Well, customers trust us with their retirement funds and, uh, you know, we're a steward of all of their assets. Aha, I'm on to something now. That's useful. Okay. So as you think about how I went down that road, that's very different from, say, another kind of business. Let's say I'm an online retailer or I, our, our business is a bank or our, or our business is a subscriber service of software or something like that. So I'm fond of pointing out that business acumen is business in general, but your business in particular. And if you understand those two relationships, sure, universal things are simple, cost, revenue, you know, sustainability, cash flow. Those are pretty universal. But specifically, well, what does it mean to us? Well, that means more subscribers. That means a customer comes into the store and doesn't just browse. They don't abandon when they're in the online portal. You know, those different factors matter differently based on what kind of business you're in. So as I think about that, that's the first one is use five whys and be, be curious. And uh, that's a simple thing that all of us can do to create new, new uh, insight into um, the business side of our projects. So when, a, when an L&D person is not, you know, familiar with their own business and all that. There's there's various stakeholders that they might want to kind of check in with and, and get mm -hmm. some insights. What kind of recommendation would you give to them in terms of what kind of stakeholders should they be looking towards? Uh, what kinds mm -hmm. of might they ask them? What, what kinds of insights are they trying to gain from, you know, various people? Because you can talk to the various people in the functions of a, of a corporation, um, and learn something specific to your business. So do you have any guidance mm -hmm. regarding that? Yeah, I, I think it's helpful to think nouns more than verbs and, and ask about the nouns. And what I mean by that is, oh, let's say I'm uh, working for a um, ready mix concrete producer and you know a, a company, right? They have the ready mix concrete trucks and driving around. Well, I'm going to help them with their service model, and I've got service training for onboarding, and you know, I I want them to have you know a customer service mentality, you know, do right by the customer. Okay, fantastic. What's the noun? Customer service is the verb, but what's the noun? What do we want when it's a, well? We want lots of satisfied customers. Give me more specifics. Tell me about what you want. Well, ultimately, when I've done this, I got to the point of concrete in the form. We're on a job site. We need concrete in the form. When that happens, when that noun happens, lots of good things happen for the business. We can send an invoice, the customer's back on time, and all these other wonderful things can occur because we put the right mix in the right place at the right time. So you think about that, it requires you a little bit of curiosity, but then you're also looking for, well, what am I trying to accomplish? I mean, when I'm done, what have I got? We got concrete and it's setting up. 
right? So you think about that in terms of customer service, we want answers, we want, we want lots of BMW drivers. We want people walking around the mall with our shopping bag name, you know, the one that has our name on it with stuff in it that they bought today. We want lots of buyers. Um, that's helpful when you start thinking about your work in that way. And so when it comes back to your compliance or your regulatory or management training, we want managers and leaders who can accomplish things. And that's really helpful when, you, when you're trying to drive the business. And I'll tell you what, Guy, it's also helps you kind of focus. It's been really helpful to me to kind of hone in on what really matters. Because in today's day and age, we don't have time. We don't have energy. Our learners don't have the bandwidth or anything that doesn't help. So you really got to help them. So if you can focus on more on the nouns than exclusively on the verbs, um, it really focuses people. It focuses what you're doing. Yeah, I like that. It's uh, it's looking at the outputs the ends and mm -hmm. consider the means, the, the, the verbs, the tactics, the behaviors, et cetera, that you're doing, but you've got to have that focus on the nouns as you put that. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, are, th are there specific, you know, resources, tools, and articles and books, and, you know, what guidance can you give to people yeah. want to learn more about the business, develop your business acumen, develop their financial mm -hmm. literacy and the other literacies that you need to, all part of that business acumen. Yeah, because that's the that's the trick, isn't it, Guy? You've got some, you understand your business, and then you're in the L and D function, let's say. Well, what's the kit? Is there a gap there? It's like, well, how do I use this? Well, one of the ways that I use it, I encourage other L and D professionals to do is helping the learners understand the why. You know, there's a lot in leadership now, leadership content talking about uh, Simon Sinek's find your why. You know, what's the when people buy? They don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. People go to your learning and get good results from your learning program, not because of what's in it, but why you're doing it. You got to understand the bigger picture. So uh, early on, you know, we've, we've been doing simplified one pagers for years, haven't we? We've put things on an A3. We want to get it all summarized into an executive summary. We're going to draw a map. We're going to do uh, uh, sketch noting, different types of technologies like that to simplify. Um, and so, I mean, the best one that I've seen is Robert Brinkerhoff's impact map technology. And I can show you an example of that, where you take who and compare it all the way across to the company or the organizational goals. And so here we are with a leadership program that's going to teach about, or they will learn about leading the business and leading others as well as themselves. But then what essential nouns are so critical to that? Well, here are the work outputs for the leaders that we're really going to focus on in the program. You know, we're gonna produce conversations. We're gonna produce a team that has capability so that we can live our values and achieve the company goals. So when you think about that, that's what's so important to me is, all right, I, I see that as an L&D professional, but maybe my learners don't see the same why and why it's so critical. And oftentimes I'll engage in simulation so they can learn for themselves firsthand. Oof, that's why this is so important. I, did, I, I knew it on a surface level, but now I see, oh my gosh, I feel it in this, uh, in this simulation experience. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big believer in, in, in maps and models, model thinkers, I don't know, Guy, if you've come across this uh, uh, compendium of mental models. Uh, it's wonderful just to show it on a diagram. This is what's happening when we go through change. This is what's happening when you want to do product testing. Here's the, the focus, uh, and here's how this relationship is. I, I use those a lot. Uh, 
uh, when we're talking to people. So, you know, Carl Binder's performance thinking models are key as well when you kind of link the performance factors to behaviors, to work outputs, to business results. Um, it's a wonderful model to help people frame. Uh, those are really helpful. So who have I all mentioned now? Uh, Carl Binder, Rob Brinkerhoff, uh, gosh, the five wives, Simon Sinek. It, it goes on and on. Those kinds of tools are really helpful in terms of framing and framing things. Um, and one final thing that I would mention that has been a great resource for me, and that's uh, uh, Ken Silver and Lynn Carney's book. Here it is right on my desk. Um, wonderful because it's about organizational intelligence. And the it, it's subtitle that they were presenting at ISPI conferences and elsewhere was about putting on business glasses. You know, my company, I understand business in general, but my business in particular, I got to put on a different set of glasses. And in the book, and uh, I still use these things where there's all of these universal questions but can get you to the specifics about how the business really does define itself, you know, in the in this idea of logic. So they have this uh, very straightforward um, model around different types of logic. You know, you pick the ones that are most relevant to your project. You know, learn a little bit about what they're talking about here. But what I love about this is then, oh, well, here are questions. Okay, let's go, compliance. I got a compliance problem. What's changing? What's rising? What's the context for some of this kind of stuff? Because then it connects to what's needed in the business. Uh, maybe I need to go after, wait a minute, I'm working with the you know, uh, customer-facing people, and we've got threats to the business because of, um, you know, uh, uh, the democratization of our technology. We used to be uh, you know, alone and there were barriers to entry. Now there isn't. Uh, and so that's what's uh, driving some of the learning uh, in my learning program. So these are some of the types of tools that I will either use in my own practice or encourage my colleagues, my L&D uh, uh, friends to kind of use to think through um, some of the, uh, some of the uh, questions that they might be faced with in their so after uh, learning all of this, you know, where, where does a person go next? Uh, they, you know, they, they do the research, they, they check into some of these resources that you've mentioned, and that is a great book, by the way. I love, I love that book. Um, what's next for them? What do they do? Well, you know, it, I guess I would suggest, you know, sometimes you have to start at the beginning, right? Let's start at the beginning. You know, that's a good place to start, right? We used to sing about that. Second thing, keeping the main thing the main thing, right? So you have two things. So you do a self-assessment and say, you know what? I, I, you were talking, you were throwing around some financial terms and business terms there, Dan, that I just thought I'm not fluent with. Well, I'll do that. So I'll work with my clients. I have a, a ready now course called What Your Boss Needs You to Know. I have a clever little, I think clever uh, uh, acronym. It's WIBNITIC, you know, What Your Boss Needs You to Know. And we take those five factors that I mentioned and we slow way down and we dig into them. Okay, what does it mean to have a margin? Different kinds of margins that are telling different things. Which margin matters to our business? What do you mean asset speed? How are we tracking that? Is it, is it days of inventory or is it turnover? You know, we're kind of, why does that matter? And looking at cases and examples and things like that. I have other ready now uh, programs that are done uh, that you can take through some of my client partners are, are um, uh, like the University of Wisconsin. We have a course called Finance and Accounting for Non-Financial Professionals. And in that, we break all this stuff down and we do budgeting. We'll break down the you know, capital budgeting, like, okay, what's the payback expectation? What's the time value of money and that kind of stuff? Because often we're involved in high dollar implementations in l and So sometimes we have to talk in terms of Okay, the speed to which we bring things to bear and what are those assumptions? Because, you know, money is finite. We don't have money for everything. So we're going to put money into your project and we have an expected return on that investment. What kind of return? 
oh, it's the return on based on other risk factors and compared to a cost of capital and that kind of thing. So we learn how to master those words, but also use them. So that's a couple of courses that we, we offer. And I have one here in Iowa that's called Financial Principles for Non-Financial Roles. A similar vein, you know, the finance for the non-financial type. And what we mean by non-financial type is a person who you know, didn't choose that as a career path. Right? We went somewhere else. We went into training or arts or something else. And we end up in a role that requires us to at least understand what's going on in the business and uh, connect with it so we can do good work. Um, so you know, those are a couple of ready nows. I'd steer people to uh, Josh Kaufman's personal MBA book and online resources. Excellent because it's smart people. It's for smart people who are like, well, I got this one thing that I really need an answer for because I have some, I have a need for it. And you can use that book straight away, find it, get something useful, dig in a little further and be uh, proficient enough. You know, and so I like that, uh, that reference as well. Um, yeah. So those are a few, uh, quick and ready references for the L and D professional to. Uh, well, I will put uh, notes, show notes in the YouTube video and in the blog post that uh, I'm going to introduce this video so people can follow up with all of that. Um, is there, is there anything else, uh, any, any guidance, any words of wisdom you would give to people before we wrap up? Well, I guess I would say that it is uh, offered encouragement because this is a very rewarding space to be in. Um, you will have pr prima facie relevance, no matter what. It's just on its face because you're not talking exclusively on, you know, design and objects and courses and rollouts. You're, you're talking about the business and your sponsors appreciate that. They recognize that, that you are different and you have, I don't know, it's just uh, um, very rewarding to be in this space. I enjoy it very, very much. Uh, I guess I would also say, Guy, I don't need people to necessarily be as nerdy and as excited about this kind of stuff as I am because there's that. I, I kind of go over a little bit. I don't get too excited. But nonetheless, <laughs> there is a certain reward that comes with it when, uh, let's say, an executive over the operation turns to you and, you know, you get the seg signal pretty clearly that, you know, I like working with you because you get what we're going for. And when you get it, they appreciate it very much. So that's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, too many of us uh, don't speak the language of business. We speak the language of our narrow profession. Yeah. And the, okay. Our clients, for the most part, are, are more aware of, you know, what's the game of business is and how you keep score. And when we, when we can't talk with them uh, at, using that kind of language and that kind of insight, right. we really seem like we're out in left field and we're not really, you know, in the, in the loop and in the know, and we mm -hmm. might make decisions that are inappropriate because we don't know any better. And yeah. I think being able to discuss these things with your clients and just you appreciating, understanding a little bit more about what they're trying to accomplish so that you can help them achieve their goals. I think that, you know, mm -hmm. demonstrating your, your competence, your acumen is, is really critical. And I've seen, you know, my clients react to some of my staff when they mm -hmm. to demonstrate, you know, a basic proficiency in all of this. Yeah, it, it's in those conversations that you achieve your credibility and your bona fides. And then you take it one step further when your work product shows that you were paying attention, right? So it's one thing to have a great conversation. It's another to translate that in, an, in a way that your stakeholders are like, yeah, this is it. I wasn't able to articulate all of this, but now that I see it, I like it and I want more of it. Well, Dan, thank you so much for uh, uh, spending some time with me today to discuss this and to share. And again, I'll put the uh, appropriate uh, contact yeah. and uh, uh, some of the references that you've made here in the show notes in the YouTube video. So people should check that out. 
But thank you so much and you have a great day. My pleasure.